In 1952, a group of young Egyptian army officers was planning nothing less than revolution. The year's main event would abolish the monarchy and send the king into exile. Soon, the ancient land of Egypt would be declared a republic. In the years leading up to the coup, Arab nationalism was rising in Egypt. King Farouk was seen as being pro-British and supportive of the United Kingdom's control over the Suez Canal. The Egyptian army believed that they had not been properly equipped to support Palestinians during the Israeli War of Independence. When that war was lost in 1948, officers blamed the king for abandoning the army. His Majesty Farouk I had been king of Egypt and Sudan since the age of 16. The tenth ruler from the Muhammad Ali dynasty led a lavish lifestyle that included regular shopping sprees to Europe. This lifestyle had aroused resentment among the people, particularly during the hardships of the Second World War. During his reign, Farouk came to be widely criticized for his corrupt and ineffectual governance. One of the men who had served in the Israeli War of Independence was Colonel Gamal Abdul Nasser. Nasser had commanded a unit in Palestine and was dismayed by the inefficiency and lack of preparation of the Egyptian army. Determined to change his country, he organized a clandestine group inside the army called the Free Officers. The Free Officers were committed to freeing Egypt from British control and establishing a more equitable government. They enlisted General Mohamed Naguib as a public figurehead and prepared to overthrow the monarchy. On January the 25th, 1952, British troops launched an attack on Egyptian police in Ismailia. 50 police officers were killed and many more were wounded. As a result, Egypt erupted in fury. Rioters burnt down British businesses in Cairo, and national sentiment reached new heights. The free officers planned a coup d'etat for August the 5th. When they learned that the king might be preparing to move against them, they decided to seize power. On the 23rd of July, the people of Cairo awoke to discover the armed forces taking up positions in the streets. At 7.30 a.m., a radio station aired the first communique of the revolution in the name of General Mohamed Neguib. The voice reading the message was free officer and future president of Egypt, Anwar Sadat. Sadat justified the revolution by announcing that Egypt had passed through a critical period in recent history that was characterized by bribery, mischief, and the absence of governmental stability. He assured Egyptian people that the army was capable of operating in the national interest under the rule of the constitution. He urged citizens not to carry out acts of destruction or violence. Should anyone behave in such ways, he warned, they would be dealt with forcefully as traitors. King Farouk fled to Ras El Teen Palace on the waterfront of Alexandria. General Naguib ordered the captain of Farouk's yacht, Al Marusha, not to sail without orders from the army. The free officers debated the deposed king's future. While some believed that exile was the best solution, Others argued that Farouk should be put on trial for what they perceived as crimes committed against the Egyptian people. In the meantime, Farouk sought the intervention of the United States, but to no avail. The order for the king to abdicate finally came on Saturday, July the 26th. At six o'clock that evening, the king set sail for Monaco, where he lived in exile for the rest of his life. Farouk's baby son, Ahmed Fouad, was proclaimed King Fouad II. But on June the 18th, 1953, the revolutionary government formally abolished the monarchy, ending the child's brief reign. Egypt was declared a republic, with General Mohamed Naguib as the nation's president. Gamal Abdel Nasser was appointed deputy premier and minister of the interior. After 150 years, the Egyptian dynasty had come to an end. The main event of 1952 had overthrown a monarchy and heralded the era of modern Egyptian governance.